Hi, this is Mrs. Roble. This is Chapter 8, Covalent Bonding, Part 3. So in this video, we're going to look at why resonance occurs and identify resonance structures. And then we're going to look at exceptions to the octet rule and um, talk about the molecules that do this. Okay, so in resonance structures, the interesting that happens with resonance structures is they typically will share electrons. So as a result of it, you might notice here there is one double bond here, but notice that when the electrons shift, it can move over into this uh, covalent bond, or it can move down here in this covalent bond. So as a result of it, we have three structures that are not superimposable. They look different if you overlap them. So with resonance, you can have molecules that have two or more correct Lewis structures, and as a result of it, they um, will share electrons rapidly. And here you see an example of a molecule, which is actually a hybrid of all three from the previous slide. And those dotted lines represent the fact that the electrons get shared so rapidly, it looks like there's a pseudo double bond with those three um, covalent bonds. Now the interesting thing is that the bond lengths actually become um, shorter because of the resonance. Okay, so here I have um, sulfur dioxide and with sulfur dioxide it forms two different um, sets of molecules here. And here I'm drawing oxygen with a double bond with sulfur and then I'm also going to put two electrons on top of sulfur. And then here I have three sets of um, bonding electrons or non-bonding electrons on the other oxygen. Now what happens is this pair of electrons, they actually go on top of this oxygen and um, this pair of electrons over here become a covalent bond. So as a result of it, sulfur still has bo non-bonding pair of electrons on top of it, but now we have an oxygen on the left-hand side that essentially has three non-bonding pairs, but this oxygen only has two non-bonding pairs and a double bond. So this is what we call resonance. We have two accepted Lewis structures and as a result the molecule kind of oscillates between the two structures. Okay so we can have exceptions to the octet rule and I talked about that in the last video. Um, there are some molecules that have potentially odd number of valence electrons and in the drawing that's at the very bottom of this slide here you see the fact that oxygen only has one valence electron and typically they occur in twos but because of the molecule here it's an incomplete um, octet. Okay there are um, compounds that actually have stable configurations with less than eight and we call that a suboctet. If you remember from my beryllium drawing that I did with the last video um, that was a suboctet. Um, if you have boron trihydride, that has a suboctet. Now, in addition to that, we have what we call a coordinate covalent bond. And I'm going to show you a slide with that where we have an atom that has non-bonding pair of electrons. And it will give its electrons to form a bond with another atom. So notice the boron trihydride on the left, which has a suboctet, um, it is going to form a covalent bond with nitrogen that happens to have two non-bonding electrons, and together they form a single covalent bond. This is called a coordinate covalent bond. Okay, there's another group of compounds that actually have more than eight electrons, and we call that an expanded octet. So please note that you have to have an element, sorry, you have to have an element where it's in period three. So we're talking about the third row 
and it needs to have access to d orbital electrons. So having that d orbital of electrons actually expands the amount of electrons that it's able to accept. So here we have an example of phosphorus. Phosphorus is in period three, and as a result of it, it can create an expanded octet. So if you look on the very right there, there's essentially one, two, three, four, five covalent bonds. And that's not typical of elements that are um, below period three. Okay, so in summary, resonance occurs when you can draw more than one Lewis structure for one molecule. And like I said, they're essentially oscillating between those, those different types of Lewis structures. And then we have the uh, three sets of exceptions to the octet rule. We have the sub-octet, we have the expanded octet, and then we have the coordinated covalent bond.